I think some girls like want a nice bathroom or a vanity or a walk-in closet. I want room to have pre-cut sheets of parchment. That's my dream. Sola Awele here, and today it's Christmas, so we're gonna make some Christmas cookies. I'm gonna show you how to make a chocolate shortbread with peppermint meringue. So you got a nice crumbly tender shortbread, a little crisp chewy meringue that's gonna bring some sweetness and pretty red swirls, so it feels very holiday. I love cookies. I'm not a cake person, and I like all different kinds of cookies. It kind of depends on what mood I'm going for. This is an easy one to make in advance, share, ship, Christmas. The first thing I'm gonna do is grease and line my pan with parchment. So the butter here is really just to hold our parchment in place. Use whatever you've got. I, since I already have butter tempered, that's why I'm using butter. Go, go heavy, go, do a nice even coat. We're gonna line the bottom and two sides so that we can easily pop this out. For the holidays this year, it's just gonna be me and my husband, which is actually kind of cool because we've been married for 10 years and we've only had like two holidays together because one of us is always working. It's, it's a little different, but I don't think that means it's going to be sad and we're going to celebrate with our family distantly. Distanced. Step one. Done. So I wrote this recipe to do in a mixer um, just because it's a little bit faster, but you can do this by hand. It's, it's totally easy. Feel free to use a, a stand mixer or a hand mixer, whatever is easiest for you. Clementine, you already got a treat. She's, she's, very, she's very antsy today. I'm using light brown because that's what I've got, but once again, since there's no leavening here, feel free to substitute the light brown for dark brown, or you can really use whatever sugar you want. Clementine, what do you need? Come here, Clem. Do you want this oven mitt? I'm gonna give you one oven mitt, okay? I don't like to give her the oven mitts. I only need one today. Do you want this? Are you gonna be quiet? Okay, all right. The things we need to do to get work done, <laughs> okay? All right. We're gonna mix this up until it's nice and creamy. I like to do a one-two combo. The wooden spoon is nice and sturdy and it functions kind of like a paddle attachment so you can get in there and mix, mix, mix. But you still need your rubber spatula to scrape down the wooden spoon occasionally. Scraping out the yolk. Most shortbreads don't have egg in there, but I'm adding it here because we're gonna add some cocoa and the cocoa kind of really dries it out. So we need a little bit more richness and moisture from the yolk. I'm using a Dutch process cocoa. It's gonna be like more of a dark chocolatey vibe, but if all you have is natural cocoa, you can totally substitute it. And I feel like we have success. This doesn't look like a whole lot of dough, but I wanted a nice even layer. It's only gonna be maybe like just over a quarter inch thick, which I think is a good, good eating experience for me. If you don't have an offset spatula, this initial smushing part you can do with the back of a spoon. Got an initial smush. Now I like to use my hands, really make sure it's nice and flat and even. Clean hands are often the best tool. And now we've finally all learned how to wash our hands. It took a pandemic, but now we know. I sing happy birthday to myself so much now. It's a very festive thing to do, you know? Maybe for the holidays we should sing Jingle Bells. Is she eating the oven mitt? Yeah. <sighs> she's so, she's just so, so, so difficult today. You okay, Clem? All right. <laughs> wow, that's looking perfect. Yeah? Tears in my eyes. Yeah? Yeah. This is just to make sure that it stays really nice and flat when we bake it. And that's it, man. That's the shortbread. We did it. What you need to rely on when you're baking a chocolate cookie like this is your sense of smell and touch. It's gonna smell really chocolatey in here. And you wanna go until that chocolatiness just fills, just fills the room. You wanna be surrounded by the toasty aroma of chocolate. You're gonna touch it and it's gonna feel nice and dry, especially in the center. It should feel nice and dry and totally set and that's how you know that you're good to go. Now I'm gonna make the meringue topping. A meringue is whipped egg whites with sugar. For this one, I'm actually going to cook the meringue over a water bath before I whip it. That just makes it a little bit more stable. You okay? What do you need? What does your heart desire? So we're back. Clementine got some food. She did not do anything to deserve it, but you know, we got stuff to do. So this makes just enough meringue to kind of put a nice thin layer on top. But if you want more meringue, just put more meringue on there. I'm gonna whisk it first. Mix that in. Okay, so you wanna make sure you clean up the sides of the bowl because these like stray bits, they can curdle and overcook. 
put this over here and make sure you stir constantly. Take your time, stir and scrape and be really patient. It's gonna take a minute to bring it up to temp. It's looking thicker, the sugar's dissolved in there. Okay, I feel good about that. You just want it to be close to 175. A lot of people think you need to use a mixer to whip a meringue, but you can whip a meringue by hand, and I'm gonna show you how. We're gonna do this totally by hand. If I can do this, you can do this too. Yeah? Is it montage time? It's montage time. I'm all, I'm all geared up, ready to do this. I'm gonna whisk my eggs. So, you need to use a bigger bowl than you think. So give these egg whites somewhere to groove, you know? This is gonna take a minute. Maybe we should turn on the AC. Oh, the AC's on. The AC's on? Yeah. Ham, do you, do you wanna... need to tap out? I need okay. to tap out. Oh. <laughs> Ham's gonna whip for a while. <laughs> look at that whipping action. Look at that mixer that's right over there. Taunting us. Taunting us, yeah. This may be the worst idea you've ever <laughs> We don't need a mixer. We are the mixer. There may be as much meringue on your tracksuit as there is in that bowl. Wouldn't it be funny if we kept whisking this and then we were like, why doesn't this whip up anymore? And then it's because there was fat in the bowl and we're doing this for nothing. Huh. Interesting. I didn't check to see if the bowl was clean. <laughs> I just, we have nothing. We have nothing. Cue the sad music. Do some like, put it in black and white. Do some really sad music and just scrape it into the bowl. We give up. If it doesn't whip in here, then there's fat in the bowl. What's that speech from? Independence Day. Independence Day. We're gonna live on. We're gonna survive. There was fat in the bowl. Make sure <laughs> your bowl and your whip is totally clean. I don't think it was because that machine should have taken us there. But let's take a moment to appreciate how beautiful our shortbread is. Totally even, flat, crisp. I can feel it. It's gonna be like a nice little icing layer. Hmm? You know, I'm gonna say that there was a lot going on. Clementine was really, really barky. Let's just blame it on that, huh? I'm shaking now because my arms are so tired. I have a liquid food color, so I'm gonna do some drops. If you have a gel food color, that stuff is a lot stronger, so I would just use the tip of a toothpick to dunk into the dye. Now it looks holiday for me. Come on, we recovered. It's gonna be okay. So this is one we made yesterday. We got nice fluff city over here. Check it out. And there's a lot more height. The swirls are more defined. It's gonna bake for about two hours until the meringue feels totally crisp. And then you're gonna crack open your oven and hold it open with like a wooden spoon to just get, drive out the remaining moisture. Can you hear the crisp? It almost feels like a little candy top. And just get in there, sharp knife. I like how you got some thick bits and some thin bits and these thicker bits kind of have a, little, have a little chew which is kind of nice contrast and texture. And then I think it's kind of fun having these different sizes because you can kind of pick. Maybe I want a little cookie today. Maybe I want a bigger cookie tomorrow. Hmm. Has like candy cane taste to it, but good. Almost tastes like pie to me. Even though my meringue didn't get stiff peaks, it's still gonna be really tasty. It's gonna be more dense and probably a little bit more chewy. Yeah, I don't want you to not make this because you don't have a mixer. But if you have a mixer, use the mixer. I think I figured it out. After we heated up the eggs, we took a while with our montage. We had a little bit of fun and the egg and sugar mixture totally cooled down. So my tip is, yes, make sure the bowl is clean. That's still a possibility. But also, as soon as you warm up the egg whites, get to whipping. Don't waste time with a montage. It's not worth it, guys. Well, maybe it's a little worth it. I think it was worth it. But, you know, for you, whip your eggs as soon as you heat them up and you should be fine.